Caroline Chung is with me right now, and if you ever wonder the importance of genetic data, this mother knows exactly how critical it is. Thank you for joining me and sharing your story about your son, Alex. Undiagnosed for a decade. Talk to me about the struggles and what you saw in that time. So my husband and I have two children. Um, both were born healthy. Um, uh, uh, Elaine and Alex. Uh, um, Alex is 13 now, and um, for 10 years uh, we were really stumped by this mysterious, um, debilitating, degenerating disease that he had that nobody could give us an answer to. So we we had noticed around about when he was the age of three, he um, was starting to not meet certain. Um, milestones and he would actually start regressing a little bit mainly he was clumsy so he he was fall, tripping and falling and that became worse with time so it was a very gradual process so eventually he he stopped walking uh, at six um, and then he uh, it went from feet upwards he lost trunk control he couldn't sit up straight he then he lost neck control he couldn't hold his head up then he started to lose ability with his motor control, moving his hands, um, holding a pencil. And then it, it, it pro continued to progress up and he uh, lost the ability to um, chew and swallow. So we actually went from um, eating um, whole pieces of food to chopping them into finer pieces to down to pureeing. Uh, and so he was on puree food for two years and we ended up having to have to uh, uh, have G-tube surgery, emergency G-tube surgery. So this, over 10 years, all of this has progressed. He lost his speech, he started to uh, slur and talk slow and eventually um, he was talking but we couldn't understand what he was saying. So this is a boy who's three years old. He's running, he's jumping, he's wrapping his arms around you, and you're watching him regress and seeking out help from the doctors. Talk about that process of trying to figure out what this was. Well, of course, he's seen numerous doctors, numerous neurologists. We've dragged him around the country to see people that, I, that we, we hope would have some answers. but. Unfortunately, seeing all the seasoned specialists in their areas and um, having multitude of invasive testing, muscle biopsy, skin biopsy, blood tests, of course. So four years of exhaustive diagnostic testing still didn't give us an answer. Um, tests were normal. There was nothing un out of the ordinary. Um, yet I see my child just this disorder is progressing and it, it's getting worse. So the answers you were getting were, it's not this, it's not this, it's not this. We have a long list of what it's not. We do not know what, um, we did not know what it was. And yet it was a fluke where you actually found a potential diagnosis. Yes, so after 10 plus years, we, Really, it was really a miraculous event. We got a call and uh, we were told there was new analysis that was done on um, some sequencing, DNA sequencing that was done back six, six seven years ago. And um, it yielded a, a gene that just recently was discovered to be causative of neuro, um, neurological symptoms. Um, so this is very, in fact, the, the, um, the paper was just published in August. And now you're going to meet the people yes. that are doing this research, yes. giving you hope for not only figuring this out, but perhaps figuring out a way to change it and halt that progression. Yes, yes, and for, for Alex and also for um, many other kids like him, um, younger ones, um, we've already reached out to other families now that we have a, a gene diagnosis uh, that we're able to talk to other families and we can connect and and know exactly yes this is exactly what's happening to my child and um, share story share therapies what worked um, and and knowing that there are researchers that are working on 
getting to the bottom of it and getting more information as to what's the next step, how, what will be the treatment um, to stop um, the progression. And I know this is so challenging for you because Alex is still struggling and as a mother that means your heart is breaking. Yet how does it feel to actually have an answer? Well, like you say, with, with Alex, um, with a child that has just chronic medical conditions, I mean, in 2015 he was in the hospital 10 times, and this year we've been to the hospital five times. So it's, it's very frightening um, not knowing what you're, what you're up against, not knowing an answer. Uh, and so it's, it's very frightening and we're always on the edge. Um, so to have a diagnosis, to know what the cause of this is, is it's a relief. It, it, it's a relief that there, there are researchers already studying this. It's a relief to know that there are other families, um, that there are other children. Just the fact that I'm, I so quickly was able to get in touch with um, researchers and other families um, to kind of come together and, and move on to a, a new journey. For researchers who work so tirelessly in the lab to come up with these genetic discoveries, not just for Alex, but for other children as well, and other disorders and other diseases, if you could speak to them about what they're doing, what would you say? I would say that what they're doing is very important. It, it really, all the hard work is, will, will make a difference to these children, to these families, um, because un having knowledge, then we can pursue better care, um, treatment, and hopefully a cure. I think together um, we'll, we'll find a way. And you're putting a face on that journey and really inspiring people to go on. So thank you so much for sharing your story, Caroline. SHGTV is brought to you by the American Society for Human Genetics annual meeting in San Diego. For more videos like this, click on the links and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.